everyone! Welcome back to Goo Strongs! Today we're going to be doing a special Halloween edition, so I guess uh, it might be spookier than normal? It's hard to say what's spooky really and what's normal in the world of Goo Strongs. Uh, today, because of the holiday, we're going to be reading Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, the 48th book in the series Goosebumps by R.L. Stein. We're going to be drinking Harvest Pumpkin Wheat Brew Moon because of pumpkins. You know, it makes sense. Anyway, the rules are the same as they always are. Take a drink anytime anything stupid or scary happens. And of course, the most important rule is to please drink responsibly if you are planning on drinking along. I guess let's get crack a on this exciting new book. I actually haven't read this one, so I'm pretty excited. I'm fully going into it cold. I don't even have like memories from like two decades ago of reading this. So it should be pretty exciting. Just gonna drink to start because it's warm in my room. The book starts off with a real bang, uh, with dad introducing us to our main character, Drew, who he likes to call Elf because she is cute and small and 12. She has short, straight black hair and sort of a pointy chin and a pointy little nose. Sort of a pointy chin and a pointy little nose. Thanks for that excellent description. Really painting a picture for me, R.L. And so one day her best friend also hears her dad call her elf and now Walker calls her elf and now everyone calls her elf. And she storms out. She likes to keep her parents guessing. That's something we learn about Drew. People call her elf and she likes to keep her parents guessing. She seems fun. She's also tough. That's another thing she wants to make really clear to us. I'm tough. Ask anyone. They'll tell you that Drew Brockman is tough. When you're the shrimpiest girl in your class, you've got to be tough. So Drew goes on to tell us that Halloween is her favorite holiday. Girl, same. No judgments there, my friend. But she does have one problem with Halloween, and that is two of her classmates, Tabitha Weiss and Lee Winston. For the past two years, Tabby and Lee have totally ruined Halloween for Walker and me. Just thinking about it makes me want to punch someone. It's actually pretty nice that this character is getting like a more, it's like, she's like getting a unique characterization normally. Uh, Goosebumps characters are just, the main characters are just very bland and like, so kids can read it and be like, I could be that person, I could make like, no decisions, and then the people who actually have like, color to their personality tend to be the supporting characters. But it's nice having a character who just straight up got rage issues. So then she introduces us to her other friends, Shane and Shanna Martin, who are brother and sister, and they are twins. They live in the house next door, and they hang out a lot. She describes them as having very round faces with curly ringlets of blonde hair, red cheeks, and cheery smiles, and they're both short and kind of chunky, which is <laughs> unkind. I don't think Shane and Shanna should be friends with Drew. She seems really mean, and I don't like her as a person at all. And so then she like goes back in time and tells us how the Tabby and Lee problem started. It started when she and Walker, her best friend, if you'll recall, uh, were 10 years old. Uh, they're hanging out in front of her house. Down the block, someone was burning a big pile of leaves. It's against the law here in Riverdale. She's hanging out with Walker while he's fiddling with his bike. Uh, she glances up and then Tabby and Lee are there. Tabby looks as perfect as always. Apparently, Drew's dad calls Tabby Little Miss Perfect, which is kind of an inappropriate thing for an adult to be saying about a 10 year old. So I'm gonna drink. So Tabby and Lee are both very attractive 10 year olds. The girls at school think he's terrific, but I can never understand a word he says. That's because he always has a huge wad of green apple bubblegum in his mouth. So Lee gets into a pissing contest with Walker about how fast their respective bikes are. Tabby says, did you get a haircut? And Drew's like, no. And she's like, I didn't think so. Lee's like, I'm having a Halloween party and invites Walker and Drew and they're like heck yeah Halloween party because they don't know that when a bully invites you to a Halloween party it's never because they want you to be there and that's the end of chapter one so mid flashback we're moving on to a new chapter I'm just gonna drink for the end of the chapter because it's warm in my house and I want to drink a cold drink so they show up and um, Tabby is dressed like a princess. 
And she's like, Drew, what are you supposed to be, a mouse? And Drew is like, I'm not a mouse. I'm a Klingon from, you know, Star Trek. You've heard of Star Trek, right? And Tabby's like, are you sure you're not a mouse? And then, like, walks away all pleased with herself for that devastating insult. Shane and Shanna are easy to spot. They're dressed as snowmen. Apparently, they carve their costumes out of big blocks of styrofoam, which is both delightful and terrible for the environment. Walker shows up. He's dressed as a mummy. And then Lee shows up, he's dressed as Batman. And everyone's talking about how great the party is when there is a big crash. The crowded room grew silent. I heard another crash. And so they keep hearing crashing noises, and they're coming from Lee's basement. Uh, someone is in the house, Lee shrieked in terror. Someone has broken in. And that's the end of chapter two, which is spooky and still in flashback. So it's like, how long is this freaking flashback? Does Arl not know where chapter breaks are supposed to go? So chapter three... Lee sprints around looking for his mom and dad, can't find them. Someone's like, call the police. And Lee goes to call the police, and then he's like, the phone is dead. Ah, that's actually very scary. Okay, drink. Two bulky figures burst out from the basement doorway. That's terrifying. The two intruders moved quickly into the living room entrance and blocked the doorway. One of them had a blue wool ski mask pulled down over his face. The other wore a rubber gorilla mask because I guess they ran out of ski masks. And the gorilla guy's like, it's our party now. We're taking over. And that's the end of the chapter. Drink. We're still in flashback as the guy in the ski mask orders everyone to get down on the floor. Someone's like, we're just kids. Are you going to rob us? We don't have any money. The gorilla demands that everyone does push-ups. It's like, just kill me at that point. And so they spend the rest of the chapter doing push-ups. And then Drew raises her eyes and sees a sight that makes her cry out in shock. This whole thing is progressing at such a dumb pace that I am going to drink again. So chapter five, she looks up. Tabby and Lee are not doing push-ups with the other kids. They're standing by the intruders and they have these big gleeful grins on their faces. I saw Lee start to laugh. Tabby joined him. She laughed so hard her tiara shook. They slapped each other a high five. Arl has a thing with the phrase slapped a high five. I have seen it in so many of his books so far. I really think he thinks that that's an expression. And I need him to know from the bottom of my heart that it isn't and it never was. So they take both their masks off and they're like, oh, it was a joke. Happy Halloween. Todd and Joe slap each other a high five. Anyway, our main character is, you know, she's right to be annoyed about the joke. Like, obviously, it's very, very scary. But for her to two years later be like, they ruined Halloween. They ruin it all the time. It's like, that seems a little overdramatic is what I'm saying. You got me. You got me. You got me. So everyone was really upset and also furious, I guess. Halloween is our favorite holiday, and we don't like to see it ruined because of a mean practical joke. So last year, we decided to get even. And that's the end of chapter five. It's just really stupid to me that they waited two years to play a practical joke to, like, get even with Tabby and Lee's practical joke. It kind of seems like it's maybe an overreaction dumb the whole thing's dumb so drew thinks jack-o'-lanterns are scary enough for decorations walker thinks they're babyish and no one's afraid of them and this year drew is throwing a halloween party and she decided to have the party for only one reason to get revenge on tabby and lee which seems like a lot of work to get revenge on a couple dumb 10 year olds now 12 year olds the four of them didn't want to terrify all the guests. They just wanted to embarrass Tabby and Lee and scare them out of their skins. A week before the big night, we were sitting around my living room after dinner. We should have been doing homework, but Halloween was too near. We had no time for homework. We had to spend all of our time making evil plans. If that ain't a mood, I don't know what is. I think it counts. My game, my rules, man. Walker and Drew are talking about all the things they're going to drop on Tabby and Lee. Fake cobwebs and uh, fake... Oh, not a fake tarantula, a real tarantula. That just seems cruel to the tarantula. Like, don't do that to a tarantula. Tarantulas are great. They don't deserve that. They could get hurt. What is he thinking? What a terrible pet owner. Anyway, I'm just, now I don't even like, I don't like anyone. I don't like Walker. I don't like Drew. I don't like Tabby. I don't like Lee. Shane and Shanna are the only ones who haven't done anything wrong. And then Walker's like, what if we cut a trap door in the living room floor? And then when they step on the spot, we'd open the trap door and they would disappear into the basement. It's like, did you guys ever watch New Girl where they're, the character Winston? Every prank you do turns out either too big. What is this? Did you register me as a sex offender? Or too small. 
how'd this blueberry get in here? <laughs> this feels like that. It's like, can we not find a happy medium, my friends? Shane and Shanna bought a bunch of red plastic fake blood puddles, and they got some green slime. And so they're just arguing over all these really lame sounding jokes. And so they're discussing and discussing and discussing, and that's the whole chapter. And then the lights went out. The room was so dark, I couldn't see my two friends sitting right across from me. And then I heard a dry, whispered voice. Come with me. Come home with me now. Come home to where you belong. Come home to the grave. Okay, that was pretty spooky, so I'm going to drink. That's excellent, I cried. The lights flashed back on. Across from me, Shane and Shanna clapped and cheered. Good job, Walker. I turned to congratulate him. He set a recorder on the coffee table in front of us. I think it will scare them, he said. So they're talking about, like, more things, dropping slime on their heads, whatever. This is going on for a while. I'm just, I would like the jack-o'-lanterns to show up already, please. I just want them to eat everybody that we've met so far. Every single person. They work all week on this, setting traps, hiding little creepy surprises all over the living room, and they carved the ugliest jack-o'-lanterns you ever saw. For the last time, my name is Bailey. And they filled them with real-looking plastic cockroaches. Gross. They made, okay, they made an eight-foot-tall paper mache monster. No, they most certainly did not. That is insane. I'm drinking. So one hour before the party was to start, the phone rang, and we received a call that filled us all with horror. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like that was the first one of the book. But the pacing has been really weird so far, so I'm just going to drink to celebrate. Oh, no. All right, so Tabby calls and says that she and Lee can't come tonight. What? So everyone's upset because they've been planning this weird revenge for a full year. I climbed shakily to my feet and glanced at the couch. What is that? I shrieked. Everyone turned and saw what I saw. A huge, ugly hole in one of the brown leather couch cushions. Oh no, Shanna wailed. I was playing with a ball of green slime. I must have dropped it onto the couch when I stood up. It burned a hole in the cushion. No, it didn't. What are you talking about? That is absurd. So of course Mom and Dad come strolling into the living room right at that moment, and Mom's like, Good heavens, what happened to the couch? Because Arl doesn't know what parents sound like. Oh, I see. Okay, this was still flashback. That was last year. Now it's two years later. And she's like, oh, they ruined my Halloween two years in a row. No, they didn't. You ruined your last Halloween. And also, what the hell was in that slime? Very dumb. And RL was not clear. This year we have twice as much reason to get revenge on Tabby and Lee. If only we had a plan. Just use your same plan as last year. Also, did they like cancel the Halloween party because they didn't... The bullies weren't coming? I don't... Understand. These kids are terrible. Both Walker and Drew decide to be ghosts. They cut eye holes and bed sheets and armholes, and that was that. Sounds kind of lazy. It's if Halloween's her favorite holiday. She sure does put not a lot of effort into her costume. So they're gonna catch up with Shane and Shanna, I guess. Walker's like, I want to trick or treat all night. This might be our last trick or treat night ever. And Tabby's like, What do you mean? Why are they trick or treating with these people they don't like? I don't understand. Do Tabby and Lee think that they're friends with Walker and Drew? Because that's just really sad. It's just really sad. This book has devastated me in ways I can't even express to you guys. So they're trick-or-treating. Going around the various neighborhoods, blah, blah, blah. Whoa, wait, one more house. Okay, so they think they're done, and then. Whoa, wait, one more house, Walker said. He pointed to a small brick house set back in the trees. The lights are on. They've got a pumpkin in the window. Walker announced, let's check it out. So they push the doorbell, and a small, white-haired woman uh, opens the door. Oh, my goodness. What wonderful costumes. The old woman's like, Forrest, come see this. You must see these costumes. A man coughs from somewhere deep inside the house. And the old woman's like, please come in. I want my husband to see you. But he can't get up. Please. Stranger danger, kids. Holy crap. And Tabby just breezes on in, unafraid of anything. The woman shut the front door behind us. Forrest, he's in the back room. Follow me. This is very dumb and scary. 
She opened the door and let us enter. To my surprise, the back room was enormous and jammed with kids in costumes. Most of the kids had taken off their masks. Some of them were crying. Some were red-faced and angry. Several kids sat cross-legged on the floor, their expressions glum. And Tabby's like, we have to go right now. Too little too late, Tabby, because the old woman has already shut the door behind them. She's going to eat these children, right? That's the end of the book. She's just going to eat the children. The woman's like, you have to stay. We like to look at your costumes. And the old man comes up and he's like, you can't go. We have to look at your costumes. Tabby's like, how long are you going to keep us here? And the old couple's like, forever. That's the end of chapter nine. It's scary, but there's also like three dozen kids crammed in this room and these two old people, can't they like overwhelm them? Like 12 year olds are not small children. And even if they were small children, a big crowd of them properly organized could easily overwhelm to frail old people. Oh, okay. Chapter 10. That was my daydream. I'm so annoyed. In her daydream, she terrorizes all of these children with this fake old couple just to make Tabby and Lee scared. She is just as bad as they are. So they're brainstorming what to do for this Halloween because I guess they still don't know. They nix a party because apparently you can't just have a nice time at a party. You have to like terrorize two 12 year olds. And then it turns out Shane and Shanna had a very scary plan. It's very simple, Shanna said, very easy to do. And there's no way it won't work. I have a feeling it's gonna backfire for some reason. So all Drew apparently has to do is invite Tabby and Lee to go trick-or-treating with them and do a cruel joke, just like was done to them the years prior, or two years prior. I really hate these kids. Like, this level of needing to seek vengeance in a child is almost psychopathic in how intense it is. And then Mom walks in the room and is like, Drew, I don't think I can let you go trick-or-treating this year. Dun-dun-dun. And she's like, Mom, why? What did I do? And Mom's like, you didn't do anything. I just don't think trick-or-treating is a good idea this year. Haven't you seen the news stories about the people in town who disappeared? Ooh, that's scary. And she's like, you mean kids have disappeared? And Mom's like, no, adults. A fourth person was reported missing yesterday. Here. Then it's fine. They're kids. Only adults have been missing. Whatever. Dumb, Mom. And Walker, with all the tact in the world, is like, hey, these people are all big. Walker was right. All four people were huge. The first one, a bald man in a bulging turtleneck sweater, had to be at least six foot six. Weird, I murmured. Weird is one word for it. So even though Drew promises to be really, really, really careful, Mom's like, no, four giant adults have gone missing and therefore my children are in danger. So um, you can't go trick-or-treating this year the end of chapter. Once again, Halloween's completely ruined. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 12. But then dad thought maybe trick-or-treating would be okay. What was the point of that? What was all this filler? We're halfway through and we haven't even encountered a single jack-o'-lantern yet. Not even one. Or else just pushing my buttons is what he's doing. He's just pushing them hard. His mom's like, shouldn't we be worried? And dad's like, Drew and her friends are old enough and smart enough to keep out of trouble. It's like, okay, what about all those adults who went missing? You think they weren't old enough or smart enough? Kind of rude. So somehow she convinces Tabby and Lee to go trick-or-treating with them, even though they're the bullies of the neighborhood and they had no reason to, they had no reason to go trick-or-treating with these losers. Like, come on. Lee answers the door. This is amazing. He had bobbing antennas on his head. He wore a fuzzy yellow vest, pulled over a black and yellow striped girl's swimsuit. He is a bumblebee. That is hilarious. I'm drinking for Lee. Lee seems great. His only sin so far has been to chew bubblegum and play a little too much of a prank. Seems fine to me. And Drew's like, he looked really stupid. I hate her. I hope she dies. Okay, RL set this up like Drew really needed to convince Tabby and Lee to go trick-or-treating. But this is how the scene plays out. Listen, guys, I started. Walker and Shane and Shanna and I are all going to trick-or-treat together this year. Do you want to come with us? And Lee's like, yeah, sure. And Tabby's like, okay. Took some real convincing. You're right, RL. That was really challenging. Tabby and Lee were in for the most frightening Halloween of their lives, unfortunately. We were too.
Dun dun dun. So Drew dresses up as a superhero, whatever. Mom's like, don't talk to any strangers. I'm sure they won't. Walker shows up. He is wearing a black sweater and black pants. A black wool ski cap was pulled down over his face and he wore black gloves. Dad stared at Walker's all black costume. What are you supposed to be, he asked. A dark and stormy night. Huh? Where's the stormy part, I asked. Here, Walker replied. He raised a black plastic water pistol and squirted me in the face. What if she was wearing, like, cool Halloween makeup? Man, these kids suck. They all suck. I hate them. So they go to meet Tabby and Lee on the corner, but Tabby and Lee aren't there. So they hear, they're waiting on the corner, and then they hear an animal growl, and the hedge, like, shakes a little. I cried out as two ugly creatures came snarling through the hedge. Before I could move, before I could move, one of the creatures leaped onto me, snarling and growling. It shoved me roughly down to the grass and dug its fangs into my shoulder. Dun, dun, dun! Okay, it turns out they're not actually animals. It is Todd Jeffrey, the kid who had frightened her two Halloweens ago. Uh, Tabby and Lee pranked them again, but they're still going trick-or-treating with them, so it's like, are they friends or aren't they? Like, if you don't like these kids, why are you spending time with them? It's stupid. And they're waiting for Shana and Shanna, and Shana and Shanna are still not there. And they're late. They're 15 whole minutes late. Oh my god. They're never late, but even for people who are never late, 15 minutes is like, it's not that bad, you guys. She's like worried that Halloween is about to be ruined again. I think this girl's just like really overdramatic. Anyway, that's the end of chapter 14. <sighs> so they go to a couple houses. Um, Lee and Tabby uh, are like, they complain because one house gave them apples, which is a fair complaint. And then they look up and they see two figures with their backs turned to us, blocking our way. They wore dark robes that flowed straight down to the ground, and over their heads, they wore pumpkins. Ha <laughs> ha As they slowly turned to face us, their jack-o'-lantern faces came into view. Eerie, jagged grins cut into their pumpkin heads. Flashing triangle eyes, lit by flames. How? As the pumpkin heads turned their fiery, ragged grins on us, Walker and I opened our mouths and screamed in terror. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 16. Tabby and Lee are not scared at all. Lee's like, we know that's Shane and Shanna. Like, how's it going, you guys? Why are you late? Because they're all friends. They're all in a friend group. They all suck. No one wants to be friends with them except for these jerks because they are also jerks. Anyway, Shane and Shanna don't reply. And Tabby's like, how did you get the fire to work in there? How can you see? And they still don't reply. And that is a little spooky, so I'm going to drink. So Drew's still wondering, like, for pages how they got the fire to work. And it's like, I am too. But at this point, it's clearly a Goosebumps thing. So I'm not going to question it. And then Tabby's like, okay, so let's go trick or treat and not just stand here and freeze. Drew suggests they go to Tabby's block, but then one of the pumpkins goes, let's go somewhere else. And Lee's like, what? And they're like, we know a better neighborhood. A neighborhood you won't forget. And Tabby's like, oh wow, scary voices. Ooh, because she doesn't know she's in a Goosebumps book and it just finally got freaky. At chapter 16, the pacing in this book is way out of whack. And that's the scariest thing I can even think of. And so they lead the way to a new neighborhood, a better neighborhood. And it's like, guys, do not go there. <laughs> but they can't hear me because it's a book. What are they doing? Walker whispered in my ear. This isn't in the plan. Where are they taking us? I didn't know. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 17, they walk a few blocks. And Lee's like, where are we going? You're passing a lot of good houses. And the Jack Lander's like, we're trying new neighborhood Ooh. so they keep walking they keep walking everyone's really upset because they're missing all these really good houses that give out like handfuls of candy bars and stuff and drew observant as the day is long is like shane and shanna are acting so weird the pumpkins lead them into the dark woods and drew's thinking all these things like we shouldn't go into the woods right now we shouldn't be away from the street away from the brightly lit houses and, but she just keeps following them and she doesn't say any of that. She just thinks it. And she's like, why do I have such a bad feeling about this? I don't know because it's obviously bad news. Chapter 18. So everyone's like stained in mud. They're walking through the woods. 
and then they get to the edge of the woods and they step out onto a narrow street. Now we can trick or treat, one of the pumpkin heads croaked. The houses stretched for blocks, two rows of brightly lit little houses as far as I could see. Everyone's like really excited. The neighborhood looks good. All the houses are like nice and decorated. So they go to one house and it's a young woman with a baby and she gives them candy. They go to another house. It's an old couple. They don't have candy so they give them nickels, which is hilarious. Everyone's really excited because the houses are super close together so they can hit a bunch of them all at once. They do a few more blocks. They hit a bunch of houses. Everyone's getting tired. The trick-or-treat bag is getting heavy. And then everyone's like, we're done. We want to quit. And then the pumpkin's like, you can't quit. You can't ever quit. Dun, dun, dun. Is this like their weird version of hell? They have to trick-or-treat forever? I'm not spooked. I'm not spooked. Like, go back the way you came. Go through the woods. Who cares? Anyway, dun, dun, dun. So chapter 19, Tabby's like, you can't boss us around. I'm going home. And they keep trying to block her path so she can't leave. And then they're like circling around them, floating silently, faster and faster until it looked as if we were surrounded by flames, a wall of leaping flames all around us. You will obey, came the crackling command. We had no choice but to obey them. We were prisoners, prisoners of their fire poetry so they're like forcing them to just keep trick-or-treating that's the spooky thing that these monsters are doing is just forcing them to trick-or-treat forever and then finally on page 80 goddamn one drew's like you're not shane and shanna who are you dun 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 chapter 20 so tabby and lee are like is this your idea of a dumb halloween joke so they both reach out their hands and grab a pumpkin head each and tug They pulled the fiery pumpkin heads off the creature's shoulders and then all four of us screamed because the two costume figures had no heads underneath. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's scary, I guess. Everyone's freaked out. They all drop the pumpkins on the ground and their mouths begin to move and their grins get wider and the story gets spookier. Like maybe this was a lesson Drew needed to learn that if someone plays a joke on you, that's not a good joke, but it's still just a joke one year. And then the next year they can't come to your party. That doesn't constitute a ruined Halloween. What does constitute a ruined Halloween is eternally trick-or-treating in the land of the damned. Okay, the pumpkins are laughing at them. And Drew's like, who are you? What do you want? And they're like, hey. And they laugh their ugly laughs again. End of chapter. Chapter 22. So they start to run, but they don't get far. Um, uttering their shrill, frightening hisses, the creatures whirled around us once again, trapping us, holding us prisoner inside their circle of flames. And then Tabby's like, how long do we have to trick or treat? And the pumpkins are like, forever. And that's the end of that chapter. And it's like, don't these people have to go to bed? Like, not the kids, the people in the houses with the candy. Like, someone commented earlier that, like, aren't you kids out late? That means time's passing in this neighborhood. So are these people gonna just stay up forever to accommodate the endless trick-or-treating purgatory these kids are in or what chapter 23 see here a woman comes to the door and drops packages of hershey's kisses into our bags you kids are out awfully late she said do you live around here time is passing if it becomes the next day they can't keep trick-or-treating they're gonna have to stop because it won't be halloween anymore every house they go to comments like you're out really late do your parents know where you are and it's like why did they take them to this specific neighborhood it is not enchanted it's not haunted these are normal people the plan doesn't make sense and everyone's like our bags are full we can't fit any more candy and the pumpkins are like that's no problem start eating the candy so they're being forced to just scoop all these Hershey branded candies like literally they have not named a single candy here that isn't a specifically Hershey candy Hershey candy of the damned I mean I think we already knew that about it though all four of us huddled there on the curb gobbling down candy chewing as fast as we could trembling frightened feeling sick we had no idea that the biggest horror was still to come dun 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 the pumpkin heads forced us onto the porch, but we had no choice. I rang the bell. We waited, shivering, feeling heavy and sick from all the candy we had forced down. Slowly, the front door opened, and we all gasped in shock. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 26. A woman with a grinning jack-o'-lantern head has opened the door. 
This has just gotten silly, you guys. Like, come on. What is this weird, contrived hell? Like, at what point in the neighborhood does it start becoming jack-o'-lantern people? And also, what happens when the pumpkins go bad? That's my other question. Pumpkins go bad so fast, especially jack-o'-lanterns, because they're hollow. Anyway, she puts candy in their bag, so at least there's that. I keep going. And you'll never guess, but every house they hit up after that, more pumpkin heads. And then eventually, Lee's like, I'm not taking another step. I don't care what you do. I'm not moving. And Tabby's like, me neither. They're the heroes of this story. Drew is just a little shit. Tabby and Lee are just trying their best to make friends. And maybe they've got been misguided about it in the past. But they're just two good-looking kids with the whole future ahead of them. And they're the only ones who are standing up for themselves. Like, Drew's just been quietly going along with this, whereas Tabby and Lee are like, okay, we have to, like, do something. And they're right, they do have to do something. They can't they can't trick or treat in jack-o'-lantern hell forever. No one can. So the pumpkins are not happy that Tabby and Lee don't want to keep going. They start screaming, their mouths stretched even wider. They let out high wails. The shrill sound rose and fell through the heavy night air. There's a flash of light. Another pumpkin head starts floating toward them, and then two more, and then another, and then another all down the block. All the doors are opening. All these pumpkin heads are coming out and floating at them. And that's kind of freaky, so I'm going to drink. So it's dozens and dozens of them coming closer. And Drew and Walker and Tabby and Lee stick like press close to each other as the pumpkins come in and approach and like float at them. Tabby's like, what do they want? What are they going to do? I didn't have a chance to answer her. Four creatures stepped quickly into the middle of the circle and when I saw what they carried in their hands, I started to scream. Dun dun dun. The four creatures stepped forward, their jack-o'-lantern heads bobbing on their shoulders. They held their hands waist high. In their hands, they each held a pumpkin head. Ooh scary one of them goes these are for you like yeah no 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 shit <laughs> come on and one of the pumpkin creatures slams a pumpkin down over tabby's head which may or may not kill her and then lee tries to run a creature moved quickly to block his way and then slam a pumpkin head onto lee's head so tabby and lee i guess are now pumpkin fied revenge achieved guys i hope you're happy and then the creatures turn to walker and me and raise the empty pumpkin heads high Please, I begged, please, no. End of chapter, dun dun dun. Penultimate chapter time, 28. Please, I cried, don't give me a pumpkin head. Please, Walker joined in. And then we both burst out laughing. The two creatures set the empty pumpkin heads down on the ground and then their own pumpkin heads started to change. The flames died out, the heads began to shrink and change shape. A few seconds later, Shane and Shanna had their own heads back. And then all four of us started to laugh. We hugged each other and spun around. We danced wildly, crazily, up and down the street. We tossed back our heads and laughed at the moon and stars. Laughed till it hurt. It worked, guys, I exclaimed when we finally stopped celebrating. It worked. We really scared Tabby and Lee this time. They'll be scared for the rest of their lives, Walker declared. He slapped Shane on the back. I'm... At what point do I drink for how stupid that is? Is it through all of this? Because I can't read while drinking. I'm not that talented. I'm going to do several big drinks for how fucking dumb that is. Oh my god, I got dumber. Get ready. That was so much fun, Walker exclaimed, and so easy. I stepped up to Shane and Shanna and hugged them both. Of course, I exclaimed. It helps to have two aliens from another planet as friends. I'm, uh, fucking furious. First of all, aliens from another planet is redundant. But second of all, I can't even believe there was a twist ending where it turned out that Shane and Shanna were aliens who could just turn their heads into pumpkins, I guess. Anyway, last chapter. Let's see how they continue to make this dumb. Whoa, take it easy, Shane warned. We don't want any strangers to know that we're not from Earth, Shanna said. <sighs> and then they proceed to explain to the, each other all, these, all this information that they would already know if this was a thing. 
They say, I know, I know, that's why we didn't use your weird power to scare Tabby and Lee before. This year, we were desperate. Shane rose up and turned to all the other pumpkin head creatures who still circled us. Thanks for your help, brothers and sisters, Shane called to them. You'd better hurry home before anyone sees that we have invaded this whole neighborhood. Everyone's laughing and happy, and they all hurry back to their houses, blah, blah, blah. And Walker's like, when do you think Tabby and Lee will discover they can just pull off their pumpkin heads? And Shanna's like, maybe never. And everyone's like congratulating each other, like it sure is lucky we have aliens with pumpkin heads as friends. And do you know what else is great about having aliens from another planet as friends, I said? You two don't eat candy. And wa so Walker and Drew get to keep it all, I guess. I suddenly had a serious thought. I stopped laughing. You know, I've never seen you two eat, I told the two aliens. What do you eat? Shanna reached out and pinched my arm. You'll, you're still really bony, Drew, she replied. You'll find out what Shane and I eat when you fill out a bit. Yeah, Shane chimed in. People from our planet only like to eat very large adults, so you don't have to worry for now. My mouth dropped open. Hey, you're kidding, right? I demanded. Shane, Shanna, you're not serious, right? That's a joke, right? Right? End of book. Um, basically, and I don't say this lightly, that was the dumbest Goosebumps I've ever read in my entire goddamn life. What a stupid twist. Those four missing adults were kind of a red herring, and then it turned out that the aliens ate them, and also was it an entire neighborhood of aliens that ate them, and also how long had Shane and Shanna lived next door and also, how often do they need to eat? Because if only four people are missing, then that mean, must mean they don't have to eat that often. And also, um, Tabby and Lee did not deserve this. I'm just so mad. That was such a bad, bad ending. Like, it was so bad. There were so many ways that that could have been resolved without some weird, dumb twist where it turned out they were secretly aliens. Why does it always have to be they were secretly aliens? Why? Anyway, thanks for watching Goose Drunks. Like, comment, subscribe. Happy Halloween.